Okay. Um, I'm continuing on with the introduction of uh, contingency tables, which is going to lead us into degrees of freedom, our discussion of degrees of freedom. And I've been referring to the hypotheses that were introduced as hypotheses needing chi-square um, to test. And I'm up to example number four. To refresh you on the null hypothesis from example number four, um, academic discipline measured as social science, earth science, humanities is not related to, is independent of computer use measured as a Mac user, a PC user, or no user, none. What would that look like as a contingency table? It would look like this. Three, it, it too, it's not really a square because I don't draw very well, but this would be considered square as well. Why is it square? Because we have the same number of rows as we do columns. Three rows, three columns. The three rows are represented by the var or rep the three rows represent the variable I've called computer, Mac user, PC user, no user, row one, row two, row three. The columns, uh, the columns represent the variable uh, I've called discipline. Social scientists, earth scientists, humanities, uh, people in the humanities, all right? So three rows, three columns. This would be referred to as a three by three contingency table. Three rows, three columns, or nine cells. Down here in this cell would be social scientists who report using no computer. Right here would be earth scientists who report using the PC. This cell would contain people who report being in the humanities and who are Mac users. These are social scientists who are Mac users. These are humanities who report no computer and so on. So now that hopefully you have a, um, you have a, a good understanding of uh, what a contingency table is, which in a nutshell, a contingency table is made up of rows and columns, now would be a good time to introduce how the construct of degrees of freedom or DF, degrees of freedom, is dealt with within the chi-square analysis, within chi-square analysis. The next page in your this handout is the formula for degrees of freedom for chi-square analysis. The formula for degrees of freedom for chi-square analysis. Here it is right here. DF equals parentheses R minus one close parentheses parentheses C minus one close parentheses where R equals the number of rows in our contingency table and C equals the number of columns in our contingency table. It's a fairly straightforward formula, not real tough. The math is easy. Just remember to do what appears in the, um, in the parentheses first and then multiply. So you would take the number of rows in your contingency table, subtract one. Take the number of columns in your contingency table, subtract one, and then multiply those two together. Okay, let's look at, um, let's look at the same examples that we've been dealing, that we've been dealing with so far. Example number one, sex and poverty level. Example number one, if you recall, involved a two by two contingency table, two rows, two columns, degrees of freedom equal R minus one times C minus one, two minus one times two minus one, two minus one is one, two minus one is one, one times one is one. So for a two by two contingency table, the degrees of freedom would be one. Example number two. If you recall, and if you don't recall, go back, pause, pause this and go back to the uh, handout. If you recall, example number two involved a two by four contingency table. Two rows, four columns, Plugging that information into the formula for degrees of freedom, R minus one times C minus one, two rows, four columns, two minus one times four minus one, two minus one is one, four minus one is three, one times three is three. So for a two by four contingency table, the degrees of freedom would be three. Example number three. 
if you recall. Example number three involved a three by five contingency table. There were three rows, five columns, degrees of freedom, R minus one times C minus one, rows, rows minus one, number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. So in this case, in a three by five, that would be three minus one times five minus one, or three minus one is two, five minus one is four, two times four is eight. So for a three by five contingency table, the degrees of freedom would be eight. Last but not least, Example number four, as you may recall, and if you don't recall, please go back and review the, um, review the uh, previous YouTube clips. Example number four involved uh, three categories of discipline, humanity, uh, or th three categories of PC or computer users, Mac, PC, none, as well as three disciplines, social sciences, earth sciences, um, uh, humanities. Three by three contingency table, three rows, three columns, degrees of freedom, rows minus one times column minus one, or R minus one times C minus one. In this case, it's three, we have three rows and three columns, so three minus one times three minus one. Three minus one is two, three minus one is two, two times two is four. So for a, for a, um, for a three by three contingency table, the degrees of freedom would be Four. Now, this now that we under, now that you understand contingency tables, which leads us right into the calculation of degrees of freedom. Ne next, we can talk about the uh, chi-square probability distribution, the tabled. Uh, the, the chi-square table, which appears on page 389, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, in SPATS. But because we just got through contingency tables and degrees of freedom, I think I will stop this clip now before moving on to uh, the chi-square table, the chi-square probability distribution. However, please know that I am assuming before, uh, I'm, I, when I go into talking about the chi-square table, I am assuming that at the that you that you understand how to calculate the degrees of freedom for a contingency table in chi square. So if you don't understand that yet, please rewatch this clip because in order to understand how I'm going to refer to and use the chi square table in spats, you need to understand at least at the very least how to calculate the degrees of freedom for a contingency table. So the next clip will deal with the chi-square table and spats.